So we'll talk it without it. He has to, he gets it without the change of ice. <laughs> so if we can, please, um, we'll call the meeting to order. If everyone's ready. <laughs> All right. So if we can begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Brian, you want to lead us? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. I could have a city starting. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so then we're going to also read our district mission. Nancy, you were in on that. Would you like to touch upon that? B, item B on the agenda, under one? Sure. Our Just district mission is developing learners, empowering futures together. And then our district vision, which should be guided by or part of establish that mission. Do you want to do that one too, Nate? Sure. To become a premier community, bridging learners with their passions and pathways. That's something we constantly work towards, and hopefully that guides our actions. Ours as a board, administration as the leaders, teachers in the classrooms, and hopefully we'll develop it and stretch it for the community to be able to be a part of it too. So on to D of the agenda, the statement of the core strategies, and this just guideline for us. This we're, we're trying out a new agenda style, so it's new for us too. So please bear with us as we work out the kinks and kind of roll smoothly with it. So we're trying to, if you're all looking at the agenda, you know that we're on item D, but we don't have it posted though. Statement of core strategies, we're trying to enhance learning, um, one, two, and three being one, advanced services and operations, two, being engaged the community through partnerships, and three, cultivate professional growth and leadership. All of those hopefully will guide our development or continued development of the strategic plan which should guide us. All right. We all read through the protocol reminders. We're going to move on to item F, the approval of the agenda. Please. May I have a motion to approve the agenda? I'll make that motion. Thank Marie. you, Brian. I'll second it. Thank you, Nancy. Marie, no. I always have to use it. going to ask that an item be added to the agenda. Under okay. Consent. He should be back momentarily, I think. In fact, okay. here he is. <laughs> I understand we might need to amend our motion on the agenda if you have some item you'd like to add to Just one item on the consent agenda is the youth options uh, oh. approval and if okay. uh, Brian, are you guys okay with adding that to the agenda? Um, yes. Amending your motion to add that? Nancy? Absolutely. And you seconding? Nancy, are you okay with amending your second? Um, I guess I um, would like to be done up on a portion of the agenda that would allow for discussion. Okay. Um, you could either pull it off the consent and discuss it then put that down. Okay. Very good. We can do that. All right. So we're going to add youth options under consent, but you're asking for it to be under, let's see, that would be under, I think we just keep Probably under it. enhancing learning. Uh, okay. Z. All right. Uh, what do you think? It goes on to consent. You can pull it off of there, and or you can put it under it. that portion with an option for uh, action. So either way, consent would probably be easier. Typically, you'll put anything to be pulled. You can pull it, discuss it, then put it back. All right. Move to the agenda, then go back to it. So you know what, we're just going to roll with this one. Um, I, I'm not normally I'm not comfortable with adding something at the last minute, but this is something we do annually, and it's just it's not something that we directly change. But if Nancy, you'd like a discussion on it, we'll keep it where you said because of the order of the agenda, enhancing learning is prior to the consent agenda. Um, we can put it where you would like it there, so we can have okay. that discussion. If that's all right with you. Hope sure that's okay with you. All right. So options. 
If the two of you are okay with those amendments, adding youth options to under enhancing learning as item D. Um, all those in favor say aye to approval of the agenda. Aye. aye. With that amendment. Any opposed? <coughs> Thank you. And we did not, I don't see roll call on here. Do you just have that on here, I think? We could. I just made note of your statements, but we okay. can certainly officially do it too. <laughs> Um, how how would we? Oh, how would sorry, we I'm no, I'm just wondering. <laughs> do you guys want to? Yeah, really, the uh, roll call is reflected in the minutes by mm -hmm. Rochelle, so we really. We don't have to worry about them. We aren't going to worry about it. All right. <laughs> All right. On to the general reports. Then we'll begin then with yours, Dr. Okay. Yes. Uh, just a few things here. First of all, I just, uh, Chris, I want you to talk about the uh, Fab Lab yeah. piece. Yeah. Uh, the uh, high school is looking at working with uh, local businesses to secure a fab lab. Uh, what a fab lab is, is a, uh, a fabrication uh, room where we would have 3D printers, uh, vinyl cutters, uh, laser engravers. Uh, we're looking for CNC mills and CNC routers uh, to be able to help the kids start understanding how to program software and, and run machinery. Uh, we've opened up some conversations with local businesses and they're interested in potentially partnering with us to, uh, to help fund a, a fab lab. And what we need for you guys tonight is uh, there's a grant that we applied for last year through WEDC. Uh, and uh, part of that grant requirement is the board approval that if they give the money, uh, the board will use that money and be willing to match uh, to be able to bring in the, the piece of equipment. The piece of equipment we're looking at is a shop bot. And uh, what the shop bot is, is it's a, uh, uh, a router that will take a four by eight sheet of plywood and uh, you program the, uh, the dimensions and everything through the, uh, the computer and then it cuts it out for you and, and uh, does it right there at the router table. Uh, many of the places that we've looked at, uh, this piece of equipment is used to uh, uh, make uh, chairs and, and tabletops and other things so that they don't have uh, a lot of waste uh, with the uh, with the equipment there. Uh, this, this equipment right now is right about $22,000. Uh, the grant that we're looking at would fund up to half of that, and then the district would need to come up with the other half of that. Uh, so that's where the, uh, the commitment comes from the district uh, with that equipment. Can you tell me the amount again? Yeah, it was right around $22,000. Uh, so we've used that as the, the basis. I'm not yeah. sure that we're looking to go the MIT route, okay. uh, but we also have some other schools in the district area in our, our conference that have them and across over into Minnesota that we're looking at uh, teaming up and, and designing things together and, and using a polycom so they can talk back and forth and, nice. and problem solve together that way. So are you in need of us putting the approval on it this evening that we would match that, what we would like to see? Yeah, so I think we are, I think we're going to do it at the uh, special, we'll have a special meeting session. at the work okay. session to put it, just so in case there's any more questions okay. about it. But, you know, the whole Fab Lab concept is so prevalent Great. in schools today that it's just, if you don't have one, you better get going and you know, get on board with it. And our bite would be somewhere around 10, 12,000, right. I imagine, so it's... Sounds really good. It's pretty good. And does this coordinate at all with WITC? It could. Uh, so there's potential partnerships there. Um, we have uh, one of the local businesses is also looking at can we uh, offer some of their training right here? Can our yeah. community ed uh, right. program help out with some of their training? Can some of our students uh, go directly from uh, taking the classes here and then just get on the job specific training uh, with the machines that they could potentially operate and we'd start some of that and, and have some certifications at least through the company if not through WITC and their uh, manufacturing uh, side of it. 
sounds so, like a great start to a community and a partnership. Right. So then he eventually is at to do like projects for the community. So if a community member came in and right, and they could uh, get certified on each piece of equipment and then rent time with that equipment and, and come in and work on projects and and then uh, there's also a potential partnership with the school store where students could make uh, and design things that they could then turn and sell in the school store. Is that what you meant, or did you mean they could contract work too? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think it makes sense if the students are doing it. You know. The, that big vinyl printer. I right. utilize that myself for uh, different things, and I thought it just made sense that students did the work for it and you know, use it as a business model. And, yep. you know, so. One of the things that uh, we went into <coughs> with um, uh, Stout's Fab Lab, and that's what they're doing, they, uh, they contract out the businesses, they'll say design us this piece of uh, equipment or this, this thing that we need, and then they pay Stout to do that. So that's something that we can potentially do down the line too. It's part of this transition from the old shop pieces and what have you into more of a technology and engineering programming and you know these kids are learning skills that they can take right off the fly you know, in, in business today. <coughs> Where do you think the Fab Lab would be located? In so uh, it would be a combination of um, and you know where the woods and metals rooms are? We'd use some of that space for the, the dirty part of the lab. Uh, and we have most of the equipment that would be needed for that. Right across the hall, there's a classroom and a computer lab. So we could uh, run the clean portion of the fab lab in the, the classroom across the hall. And then in the computer lab, have all of the software uh, that would run it uh, in there. Um, one of the pieces that we've looked at is as we transition this to try to make it feel like one big room and then generate some excitement around the uh, potential of being in that uh, facility is cut some windows in each of the rooms so that you can see into it from the hall. Um, we've uh, toured a couple of places that have actually have the windows into the metal side, even with the welding and all of that, they, they do that. So uh, we can do it in the, into the metals room, into the, the clean fab lab area, and into the computer lab. Uh, the place we can't cut a window in is the woods uh, area because it's already uh, on the other side of the wall is storage. So it would remove the storage from there. But otherwise we could have three of the four rooms have windows. And there are, are there any uh, courses or curricular pathways that have identified that they would be using this? Yeah, one of the uh, uh, pieces that we've done is uh, we can tie it right into our PLTW courses. We can start having um, how to make almost anything where you go through and, and get the uh, certification on each piece of equipment and then you design and generate your own projects. Uh, and then that can branch off into working with other schools and, and uh, doing things that way. Um, we could, uh, I've seen it where uh, the foods classes come in and they're, you need to market something or you need to package something. So they learn about the package engineering side and the sales and the marketing and all of that. Um, we could potentially start a rocket club down the line where we, we produce our own rocket fins and, and parts right in the fab lab then mm -hmm. and go compete on the national level for, for shooting a rocket up. Um, we can partner, like I said, at the school store. There, the, the partnerships that we have that way are, are limitless. Uh, and what we can do to generate funds and, and revenue that way out of the fab lab, it could sustain itself through community ed and uh, sales in the school store. Thanks. Any other questions? That sounds great. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. So if you do have any other questions the next week or so, we'll have us for action. Right? Sounds Special meeting at the work session. Sounds great. Okay. Uh, next piece I have is, uh, I was given this, I'll pass that around, uh, this is actually for the board. Um, I was given that this summer at, uh, as, a, as I was seated as one of the 12 AASA executive team members, uh, that's the National Superintendents Association, uh, we got these plaques to give to our school boards in appreciation. However, it had a different district name on it at the time. <laughs> I got that. And uh, I just got a new, uh, the new certificate the other day, so hang that or set it up. But just in appreciation of you know, the time commitment, there's uh, four meetings throughout the course of the year, but they they pay for everything, so it's not a, it's actually it's an advantage because the national conference that I would go to, which would be a district, they pay for it all. Now, we're <coughs> in that, that group, so again, just a uh, nice piece there that uh, I was elected by the central states, uh, I think there's about eight states in this, <coughs> in this region. I sat on the governing board for six years, which is about 200 people, and then the executive board is 12 people from around the country. And 
Uh, very interesting. A lot of laughing, a lot of good stuff, uh, a lot of insight to what's going on with the, uh, the new campaign or the, the president elect. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> Uh, the, well, the next thing is the, the enrollment. If uh, you take a look at the enrollment, you know, as a year to date, we're up three kids uh, from last year. But when you look at uh, where we ended up last year, right now we're down 10. Uh, usually you don't gain kids through the course of the year, but although last year you did gain some. So, uh, you know, we're, we're in the bucket ballpark, so we'll see where that goes. It's, they're not leaving in droves, or the buses aren't waiting to come in outside the parking lot, so uh, we're doing okay. Uh, hiring and just a couple of hires. You know, most of the hires that come through are you know, uh, special education aides or parents, people, kids that come in with uh, IEPs that uh, need help. So, uh, it's not like we're adding, adding uh, quite a few people here. Uh, a little bit about strategic plan update. We're uh, ready to get rolling, and a couple things I wanted to to share with you right now. We can. I'd like to talk more about this at a work session, uh, but we've been going through the mission, the vision, the belief statements, and met with Josh uh, Schroeder a couple weeks ago, uh, met with the uh, person I've dealt with on strategic plans, and I want to do a little bit of massaging to this, but I need to get the core, plan, the past core planning team together to take a look at uh, how we can reconstruct some of these pieces. Does, and I'll just give you an example here. When you when you look at the you know, the, the belief statements, you, know, you want things that people boom 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 catch them and they know them. And when you put it in a format like this here, you know, I read about halfway through and I'm lost, and I'm not going to remember those. But I want to get the core group that did this work together to see if we can do some arranging that they're okay with. Now respecting the work that they did because you spent quite a few days putting this together. Uh, and there's there's just a couple of pieces with the mission mission and vision that from an outside view don't connect the plan all together. And again, uh, I want to talk about this at a work session so you can kind of see how uh, some other plans flow together that everything is a tie through from your uh, uh, result statements all the way up to your tagline, and it just it makes it makes sense. So uh, just want to kind of let you know where we're at. Because uh, we, we want to start getting this pretty hard now if we want to finish this up in April because there's a lot of work to be to be done on this and we can do it. And we do have a, a budgeted money for this because, uh, you know, I think uh, to get where you are, you, you probably, and I think you paid somewhere around seven, eight grand in fees and what have you. And I'm anticipating to get this whole thing finished uh, with some help that we'll need on it. You know, it'll probably be between that five and ten, but we've got the money. So let's, uh, you know, we're all set to roll. It's just I got to get that core team together. And one of the things I've mentioned before about that core team, it was very heavy internal, and it really has to be the opposite. It really has to be stakeholders in the community, and very little internal because the internal piece comes with the action and measurement. The, you know, the the community says here's what you want, or here's what they want, and then you turn it over to the experts in the buildings to really know how to get that done. And so it's very little community work on those pieces. So. Uh, just do a little tweaking here, and I think we'll be ready to roll. But again, we'll have that conversation at the work session because I want to make sure we're all good with that pathway. And being the keeper of the plan, so to speak, I, I've got to get it in a language that you know, makes sense to me also. So. Um, student feedback sessions and staff feedback sessions, and we, uh, Michelle? you want to talk about the one we took one through the seniors? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we got to, all the senior class met with, I think, think, and we got to talk about um, things that we like about Somerset, things that we don't like, and things that we would change. Um, and I think the students really liked that because um, they really got to put out their top five things in each category and share them around. And we came up with a big list um, in each category. And then we were given the chance, we had stickers, and we were able to go put at our top six choices in each category. And then um, even further, we got to mark our priorities down, which I thought um, students really liked having a voice and feeling like they got um, some say in what's going on. I think in some ways it could have been a little more productive, but um, I think overall it was really, really good to have be heard. Didn't hear too much snoring out there. No, no. Engaged. Everyone was very engaged. Um, 
heard a lot of comments um, outside of the classroom, which is really like nice that. So we're going to do the same thing with each building, staff in each building, and go through the same process. And really, just three questions: you know, What do you like? What's, what's going on here? You like? What, what don't you like? And if you had the magic wand, what would you change? And then we just take them through a nominal group method of prioritizing, bring it down a funnel to what are the priorities we need to work on, which really helps me understand what's what's going on out in the building since I'm not out there every day. So once all that data is broken down. Uh, I bring it to a work session and you kind of see where, where we're at, where our priorities, you know, everyone feels what they're seeing. So we did the same thing with the Chamber of Commerce uh, a couple weeks ago and uh, just kind of a nice process. Actually, that was a SWOT analysis. Uh, but those types of sessions are, uh, you know, I mentioned before, I'd love to get the village, township, and the school board all together at one of those mm -hmm. to strategize on where we're going as a group. And at least then you know. What, what things we can work together and what things we're, we're diametrically opposed to. So, uh, again, I'll have all those done by the end of the next week and then it's just putting the data together. And then what do you do with the data? Well, we break it down and see what, what are you know the priorities, what do we want to work on, and how does that fit in with our strategic plan? Because it also should help us with our strategies also. So are you saying you work with the strategic plan? It's, you know, when you do a strategic plan, you've got a data book. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got all the hard data and that, and then you've got, uh, you know, any things like this are just bonus information. When you know what the issues are, you know, shame on us that we don't include it into our strategic plan to work on it. So uh, it's just more information. The base, uh, but it goes. It'll Unless go, I say, where does the information go? Oh, it'll go to the core planning team too, as some as some ancillary information. So, you know, when you're setting up your, your results or your uh, objectives, uh, you know, you want to have as much good information as you can. And just you're just getting a wider demographic of, of, of information. You know, the core planning team is only 30 people. And it should be demographically correct to your community, so you just don't, don't have all, you know, yes people or, you know, what have you. It should be a wide demographic. And this just adds, you know, one thing that I saw from the get-go was you didn't have kids on core planning. <laughs> uh, you know, you need that input. So, again, it's just going to give us more information to dive into our plan with and make it a better plan. Okay. So, that's all I have. Unless there's any questions. That sounds really good. Thank you. Did anyone else have any questions for that? I think it's exciting to have community more engaged. That's, uh, that's always a plus. Well, these are their schools. That's correct. And uh, mm -hmm. we just operate them. Yeah, so. <laughs> they have their money. <laughs> I look forward to that process playing out. I think it'll be even more effective, or can be. So we'll move on to item B under two, and I'm hoping Dave is here. No, there, there wasn't anything. Dave didn't have okay. anything. Okay. All right. So. Nothing different under the financials. We're just gloating about that today. Well, that's all good. Yeah. So, and everyone got information in the packets. It looks really complete. I appreciate how he sends out those codes so it gets yeah, them it's more in our brains. Eventually, you know, there will all be hyperlinks, so you, can, you know you don't have yeah. the paper, but just <laughs> one at a time. Yeah. And getting a same thing, so we know what we're looking for. We graduate. We have pieces. I think that's great. So then we'll move on to item C: the directors and principal reports. Who gets to do that? We'll, we'll be reporting under Enhancing Learning tonight okay. on the school report card as well as our building SLOs. Very good. Thank you. Thanks for curating. We'll probably take that C off of there because that's where it'll go. All right. Under the enhancing learning piece. Good. So on to then the, any board members have any things they would like to uh, report on? Any community engagement or anything like that? Yeah, that is lower. I see that too. Okay. So, uh, in this area of the school board member reports, what are you looking for there then? If it's other than that's another piece that should just come off and go into okay, the okay. main agenda. Because I do have something for that. For the engagement portion? Yes. Okay. And where would you like to see anything from CISA in this in the community engagement or in this? Probably in the professional five. Okay. All right. 
So then we'll hop past that one on to E. Shelly, nice. yay, community rep. Thank you, Shelly. When I started preparing this report, I thought nothing had happened <coughs> in November, but as you can see, we've had a lot going on. So um, just recently, WITC hosted their career day, and um, Mrs. Emerson and Mrs. Sutton took over 50 students to WITC to um, explore some different career options. Um, as you can see... The students got to try out some different things. Um, they were, they had the option to go on some different sessions, um, learning about like nursing and a lot of the technical careers that WITC has available, which was good on two different levels. One, just to get that career exploration in there, and also um, to see what careers uh, WITC has available, especially that we're seeing that there's a huge demand for these technical careers. Um, we also had some students participate in the Creative Writing Festival. The Creative Writing Festival is held at UW-Whitewater. Um, Mrs. Kazik and Ms. Spurl took 28 students with them down to this festival. Um, students have the option to submit um, some of their own creative writing, and their uh, professor will read their writing and then go through it with them. Um, offering suggestions, things they like, things they don't. And then the professors will then take all the work that they see and they'll submit um, the best ones to a judge. Um, and they had one student, Hannah Ullman, who's a junior. She received second place um, for her song lyrics category. So that was really cool to see. Oh, right here. Um, that's Hannah. And then they're just sitting in some of their sessions getting to talk about their work. Um, the high school also hosted their student of the term. Um, they just started a new thing. Um, I think when I was a freshman, they started doing student of the term, where each department of the high school will recognize one student that um, is just really doing outstanding work in the classroom and just as an individual. So all 11 students were recognized for the fall term. Um, they have a little breakfast and a little ceremony where each um, teacher gets to talk about a student and just what they're doing in the classroom. Um, we've also uh, had some field trips going on at the high school. So Ms. Olson took her art classes to um, Franconia Sculpture Park and the Minneapolis Institute of Art and the Phipps Center in Hudson um, just to experience some different types of art and kind of supplement that art piece in the classroom. Um, so she t those are all the students who got to go to the Minneapolis Institute of Art. Um, there's a lot of different types of artwork you get to see. At the Phipps Center, it's a lot of local artists. Um, and then at Minneapolis, uh, there's a lot of famous artwork. You got to see some Vincent Van Gogh paintings, Claude Monet, Henry Matisse. And it's just a very cool experience for the students um, to take what they're learning further. Um, they're going to be doing research on an artist and some art different artistic styles. Um, Mr. Lindenberg and Mrs. Cadlick also took their AP Lit classes to um, the movie Hacksaw <coughs> Ridge. Um, right now in the class, we're learning about connecting different um, types of literature uh, under the theme of war. So um, it was a perfect synthesis to what we're doing. We're going to be taking what we saw in the movie, which was a great movie. It's very good, very raw, very, um, very educational. Um, it was a great movie. And we'll be making connections in a paper we're writing. Um, on student council, we are going to be um, having a holiday fundraiser. Um, so we are going to be volunteering at Toys for Tots in December. Um, but uh, before that, we're going to be raising money for Toys for Tots. So each Friday, we um, make cookies and we sell them during homeroom. So we're going to be taking the money that we earn from these cookie sales, which usually goes back to student council. We're going to be taking that money and we're going to be donating it to Toys for Tots. Um, so we're looking at donating about $500 which we think will be a great way to help out and just um, have the whole student body support Toys for Tots. Um, our winter sports are just starting to gear up. Uh, boys basketball and wrestling have begun, as well as girls basketball. Girls basketball has actually already played in the scrimmage and um, their first game, as well as they're playing right now. Um, forensics and mock trial are getting started as well, and our yearbook's coming along well. We just did our cover session um, so that's coming along. So we're looking forward to some really great 
seasons, and I'm really grateful because it's our winter sports and activities. Any questions about anything? Except you were busy. Yeah. <laughs> thank you nice. for yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you for all the work you do into preparing and yeah. bringing the pictures. Yeah. Of I think you need to connect with whoever does the district Facebook page. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, then, no questions for her. Then we will move on to um, item F staff, students, and community recognition. This is uh, time for us to recognize some of those outstanding athletes and parents that coach those athletes and coaches that coach those athletes. So we will we get to start with, um, I'd like to welcome the cross country coach or whomever speaking on her behalf. Love you. Oh, wonderful. Um, I'm Abby Christensen. I am the cross country coach here in Somerset. Um, this is Anya Swanson over here. Um, her third year, she's a junior and her third year running at the state um, cross country meet. This year at state, she finished 20th or 27th in a time of 20 and 2011. Um, it's not at all the story of her season, so if you look at it, it does not recap it. Anya, we raced nine races, and she never, um, state was her 10th, so her first nine races, she won all nine of them. She won uncontested. We pretty much saw all of northwestern Wisconsin going into it, so I mean, very talented runner. Um, going into state, we were hoping for a top 10 finish. She was 89th her freshman year, 14th her sophomore year. We were hoping top 10, um, and she was in it until the last part of the race. Um, totally doable. Her time was there. It just wasn't her day. So um, she is legitimately a top 10 runner in the state of Wisconsin, even though the results don't show it. I 100% will vouch for that. Her times vouch for it. So if you look at her times from her other races and plug them into the state meet, it's totally doable. So, um, to next year. Yeah, mm -hmm. great, great runner. So, I think um, the town of Somerset or village of Somerset is super, I mean, she's, she's a phenomenal runner. Very talented girl, so. She's a little thing. <laughs> I guess. But fast. <laughs> Well, congratulations Thank you. You know, in recognition of your outstanding performance at the state cross country. Thank you so much for representing us and, and congratulations. Thank you. Is there anybody that cheered you on that you'd like to introduce your folks or brother or My family? <laughs> <laughs> and Melanie. Let's see that one. with the State Honors Project. So WSMA uh, puts on an Honors Project every year, and there's two levels. There's a middle level, which is for grades six through eight when they audition, and then high school, which is for grades nine through 11 when they audition. So these students last year, last school year, um, auditioned for this honor. The high school auditions took place in February, and the uh, middle level auditions took place in April, March, whatever, you guys are right April. on that. Yeah, April. And um, they have to wait a long time after their audition to find out if they made it in. I was looking at the program when we went to see their concerts, um, and I just thought it was interesting that they put these statistics in there, but um, over 16,000 students, um, 1,600, excuse me, that would be a lot, 1,600 students auditioned um, for the high school honors projects, and of those 1,600, only 420 made it in. So it's really, really competitive for these students. And then at the middle level, it was 1,200 students auditioning and 312 <coughs> made it in. So that's between um, band, choir, and orchestra for those projects. It's very, very competitive. The auditions are, are stressful. 
It takes a lot of preparation to get there. The students have to prepare a solo, um, and then have to do sight singing in front of their adjudicator, which is very difficult to do and to do well. Um, and then the high school students have a couple of the elements for their audition too. Um, so they have to wait about a month and a half, two months after their audition to find out if they made it in. And we had three students to do that. So we had um, Colin Gallo, who made it into the high school um, honors uh, choir. And I believe that his is third time doing that. I, I don't think he's ever not passed his audition, which is incredible, absolutely incredible. And then at the middle level, um, we had Jacob Wright and Kayla Herda, who have also been in honors choir multiple years. This was their second year. So now we're trying to get them in the high school level. So already preparing for those auditions, they, the registration is due at the end of the month. So we're working on that already. There's a very quick turnaround. So fantastic. The concerts take place, like I said, in Madison. They get one day of full rehearsals, plus a couple hours the night before. And then it's concert time. So they meet with students from all over the state of Wisconsin, the best of the best, and prepare their music ahead of time, get there, um, get to interact with, with those people and with um, really outstanding conductors, guest conductors that they bring in for these students to work with them for the day. And it's, a, it's an awesome thing to watch, to see middle schoolers perform high school and college level lit is an amazing thing. So I'm super proud of them. Um, the two were able to make it this evening. So just really proud of you guys. Congratulations. Congratulations, outstanding job, outstanding performance at State Honors Choir. Very awesome. <laughs> and your Jacob, and Jacob, uh, outstanding performance at State Honors Choir. Very good. Congratulations. Very awesome. I, I, it's unbelievable at your guys' age to be up there and do that. That's really neat. That's really cool. Step over that way for a picture, you guys. <laughs> Farther. <laughs> going right. closer together, like yeah. All right, there you go. Not afraid or allergic. And I know this takes One a more. lot of commitment on both the parents' part and on Jamie's part. And Smile those, a little. these guys right. really put in a lot of time to prepare for that. It's, it really is a big achievement. It's a lot of extra work. You want to take color? Thank you. Then, Jamie, I want to give you the opportunity, if you would, for the fundraiser that you're going to be singing at. Kate just told me about it tonight, oh. so you should spread the word on that. Sure, I can, I, can, I can definitely do that. Um, I am part of a women's chorus. There's eight of us. Um, we're called The Affections. And um, we are doing a benefit concert at UW River Falls on Tuesday, November 29th at 7.30 at the Fine Arts Building there. Um, there was a student who um, is from South Korea. He's in his early 30s and working on his music ed degree there and um, was about a year and a half away from finishing and was diagnosed with stage four stomach cancer. Um, so he uh, picked up his family, two kids and wife, and they went back to South Korea, which they've got a better treatment rate for stomach cancer there. Um, I guess it's a little more common, so for this particular type, it was a better situation for him. So we're um, doing that concert to support him and his family. So it'll be us, um, the UW River Falls Concert Choir, and I think some of the faculty from the university, too. I think a lot of us aren't even aware how many musical performances that are available to us and within such a short driving distance. So thanks for sharing that. Please do keep sending the information home with the kids so that they can tell somebody and more can learn about it. And shameless plug, plug for the musical coming up too. <laughs> yeah. So it's yes. on the 9th, 10th, and 11th. Mm -hmm. We're gonna that too. There's right. nothing shameless. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, did you write? Yeah. 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 Thank, Thank you so yeah. much yeah. for representing us so well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. really, we really so, appreciate it. Seeing the arts. Uh, come the quality of arts pre, uh, performers that come out of our school district. It's amazing. It says a lot to our instructors and also the dedication to our students. Did you have anybody here with you that you wanted to introduce for us? <laughs> <laughs> Did you have anyone? My dad. <laughs> Thanks for supporting your kids so well. All right. Um, I think. Yeah. Sweet treat. Like okay, that is in honor of your achievements. Mm -hmm.
and Anya, your achievement. So you guys get the first pieces. So <laughs> we'll take a, probably a 12 minute, or 10 or 12 minute break then to honor those guys. Thanks very much for coming and participating with us. Read what we've got here. A little change in it. Opinions and ideas contributed by students, parents, staff, and other citizens are valuable to the school board, to us. The board will receive such input without comment and take no action relative to any item brought forth this evening. They may direct the district administrator to consider such an item at an appropriate place on the agenda or at a subsequent meeting. The board has set aside 20 minutes for this purpose. Anyone wishing to address the board is asked to fill out a card prior to the start of the meeting. And please limit comments to five minutes. So I didn't see any red cards by anyone. That were filled out. Are those filled out by no? Them? No. <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing the new process. So um, because we're kind of in transition, I want to be sure that if there was anyone that did have a comment and did not know about the new process, if there are any groups or individuals that wish to be heard tonight, um, I'll ask it the same old three ways. But we're moving forward. We will probably we will not be doing it that way. But we'll be using the cards. Um, groups or individuals wishing to be heard. Are individuals wishing to be heard? Thank you. We do value the input and we do need to hear it. Um, so that's why we're asking people to think about it and write it down ahead of time. And forward. So, all right, then we'll move on to item number four enhancing learning. And if I understood correctly, this is where we get to hear from the teachers. And Trish, you're going to be hitting us on the first one A, understanding the state report card. Is that right? Yes, we're going to be going over the embargo was lifted and our report cards are now all public for all of the districts and schools across Wisconsin. They're very easily accessible on Wisconsin Flies Dash. So we wanted to just take a second and go over what it means when you look at the different parts of our report card and how we fared this time. So the district report card is on the top. You're welcome. And then each school will talk about their results as well. Would you like to show there? There you go. Have you taken a look at these beforehand? I have on the web. Okay. Just, yeah. you know, what Trish is going to go through here is kind of a 50,000 foot view here, but then it's surely can be an item for a work session to dig a little deeper in here because we could spend all night, you know, what strategies are we going to use or what have you. So I think if you just keep your questions in mind and keep them up here and then we'll dig down at a work session where we have to take some time. Got any copy? I do. Okay, so we wanted just to, you know, the school report card has gone through some transition. Our assessment has gone through some transition. And last year, legislatively, they pushed the pause button, literally, and created a, oh, of course you are a stinker. <laughs> created a um, gap. Oh, we're just going to forget about that. Here we go. Maybe we're not going to go anywhere. Hold on. There you got it. Oh, now we got it. Now we're going to go back. So right now I just want to go over a few things so you understand what are all the priority areas, where did the data come from, and then we're going to get to some goals that we have created and have been working on because of what the data is telling us for this particular year. So just to remind you, the report card calculations are based on multiple years. And each section is based on a different set of multiple years, a different number of years. And we've had a lot of changes in the last um, three to five years. In fact, there are sections of this report card that are based on three different assessments altogether because we have had three different assessments over the last three years from kindergarten, well, from three through eight. Um, so the WKC is still under consideration. That was our old state assessment for this for these calculations. The WAS, which is the alternative assessment for the WKCE, we had Badger, that if you remember, Badger was only here one year. Forward came in, it turns out that those scores are a little more rigorous, uh, or the test must have been a little more rigorous because schools in the area um, all scored just a little differently compared to how we scored on the Badger. ACT is clearly the entire high school report card. Um, and in fact, there's some data, tricky spots on that, that I'm sure Chris will get into and I can elaborate on if you'd like. And the DLM is the alternative assessment for our forward exam. Although our students take the SPIRE in ninth and 10th grade, which are part of the ACT suite, they are not considered for any part of the calculation. 
uh, and no work keys as well. So those two assessments are not considered when we look at the calculations. So when you take a look at the district report card, and remember we get a district report card that takes into account how our three buildings have done. So our, from our elementary, our middle school, and our high school, they put it all together and what do you get? Boom, here it is. They went to a new scoring system, one change this year based compared to what you saw two years ago, and that was adding a star system. So now we've got the overall score as a number, as a star, and as a category. And I'm happy to report that all of our schools and our districts either meet or exceed expectations. We came in with 71.5 as a district, 1.5 points away from exceeds expectations, um, and some data to take a look at to both celebrate and to work on. The second section is right below that overall score, and that's our district information. This is just a nice snapshot of who we are. You're going to see that it, it does have our enrollment at the time. It has mobility within the district. Not doesn't really concern us, um, but between districts as well. On the other report cards, you're going to see open enrollment numbers, which is really interesting to take a look at. Enrollment into the district. Our race and, race and ethnicity and our student groups. Then we get into the priority areas. This overall score is configured based on the numbers that are generated out of those priority areas. There are four priority areas. The first one is student achievement. This is an area we did really well on. We saw great improvement. And although they're very cautious to say, do not compare your score from the last report card to this report card, because there's so many factors that have changed, assessments have changed, and even the way they're calculating it has changed. We can look at the priority areas and find some spots where we can have better conversations. Um, and so there's some detailed components too that we know where the numbers came from. And that's what Dr. Bezik's talking about the work session. So student achievement's a great area to start with because we actually went up five points since the last time, which is really exciting. And, it, and English language arts as well, uh, we saw a nice increase there. Compared to the state, you can see we're above state in all categories for student achievement. Student growth is an area we're working on, and this has to do a lot with um, cohort groups that we have going through, as well as are our kids growing as quickly as other kids like them across the state. Closing the gaps, another area we saw a nice increase in our mathematics achievement gap here. What I had talked about with the years of data, three years of data is taken into consideration for the student growth section, five years of data is taken into consideration for closing the gap. When we take a look at on track and post readiness or post secondary readiness, our graduation rate, attendance, um, third grade English language arts, so on, nice scores. We saw some nice increase in our attendance rate again and third grade English language arts achievement as well as overall category. Next question. Kate? Sorry. Let's ask, the student growth, where's that measured? Like, how is that measured? certain grades? How do they, what's involved in that? That's a tricky one. So this is the first time we're seeing the student growth calculated the way it is being calculated. And from our understanding, we've listened to many webinars, we've sat through many sessions, they're looking at a student based on their demographics, who they are, what they carry with them, and how they grow as compared to other students across the state who are like them. So it's a different way of looking at growth. In the past, it was really about how quickly are we moving those kids. Now they're really looking at how quickly are we moving those kids, and is it as quick and as far as students who are like them across the state? So a boy who is maybe um, in a, a boy who's in eighth grade who comes from an economically disadvantaged background. So they look at it that way. In the state, they they consider a three, growing our kids at a three, and we came in at a two point one. Make sense? I know it sounds really crazy. But it's so actually not three following years one kid through one kid's scores. They are not. Okay. They are not. Do you want to add anything to that part? Those of okay. you that have looked at your data? Just at the high school level, the uh, only subgroup that we had was our low socioeconomic status students. Uh, and so that's the uh, the growth rate that is uh, looked at for for uh, for the high school and closing the, uh, closing the gaps, I guess, is the one that's under for the high school. 
but it's the, the low socioeconomic. It was the only one that, that qualified with a high enough population that wouldn't potentially identify a single student. If you really want more information, you can visit the Value Added Research Center out of UW-Madison, but it's a little overwhelming. The metrics behind how they mm -hmm. pare all of the factors down and really compare it, it's um, highly confusing, unless and you're I a statistician. You. you can ask me, I will do my best to let you know, um, but I've sat in you know, multiple sessions with it, and it's dry, number one, and it, it, it's tough to figure out, but it gives us something to look at as far as if we're shooting for that three, which is kind of that, you know, that average, there's that range in there as well. And so we know we have some work to do with certain populations. And you'll see that this is one area that we have to in as well as we go forward. We'll come back to that thing too. Okay. So the other piece that I mentioned earlier is this report card is very different than report cards in the past, both from what assessments they're looking at and also how they calculated our overall score. So this year they brought in another component, which looks at our um, free and reduced population. So as a district, typically you would think each area is worth 25%. But what they've done is 25%, 25%, and then the achievement and growth are on a sliding scale. If you look up at our, when you compare our student achievement, our growth, it really is kind of a, it's a calculator. It's an actual calculator. You can slide to see how they did it, if they weighted your scores. So if, you're, if your free and reduced population is 35% or 30, 35, right, or under, then you have student achievement factoring heavier in your overall score than the student growth. Once you hit 35, it's a 50-50 shot, so now we have an even distribution. And if your district is one that is very high in um, frame reduced, socioeconomically -economic, disadvantaged, then they give much more weight to are you growing your kids versus what their achievement is. So it's a brand new way that they've configured this, that we are all looking at what that impact is on our overall scores for the districts. Some districts that work really well for them, um, some districts are not so happy about the weight. So you can see right now, this is actually on our calculator when we did our little sliding scale. We came out like this. Our student achievement is weighted 0.67. Our student growth, 0.32 of that whole 50%. Just something to note. Always something new. Don't worry about those metrics. We're going to move on. At the bottom, you have a nice little snapshot of how we as a district fared against the state as a whole for all of the grade levels. So just in the areas of ELA and mathematics, you can see that we performed above state in both areas um, when you look at, at us as a, an entire district. And those are based on our Wisconsin board exam and the ACT combined. Okay. So it, when these first were released, first the scores came out, then the report cards came out, and everything was embargoed. And we started to kind of look and see where are we solid. Do we have any areas where we can say, okay, we're on, we're, we have some momentum, we're, we're doing great things here. And then what are some other areas where we need to make some changes? Where is our greatest need? Uh, we went through that at each building because the building is actually what factors into the overall test scores. Our principals are going to talk about that a little bit later. But at the district level, we also wanted to talk about pieces that we saw across the system. And so some of the work that we have defined for our PLCs, for our, our goals for this year, is to really define our essential standards. What are we really guaranteeing for <coughs> each course and for every student? So when a student is in third grade math, what skills, strategies are they going to be able to do when they leave that grade level? So that they're ready, they're prepared for the next piece around that corner, with the skills and strategies they need to be successful. So we're taking a hard look at all of the standards and our work and guarantees around them. We also are looking at the depth of knowledge or the rigor, what kind of thinking those standards are actually saying our students need to be able to do. So really looking at what is the standard saying a student needs to be able to do at that level in that course. We're really dissecting it to really better understand our guarantees. Um, and then looking at our learning targets to see if we've aligned those 
to those standards at the correct level of, of rigor. Beyond that, we're starting to look at our support systems that we have in place for kids that need more time or a different way to learn something. So at every building, we're starting to talk about what kind of systems do we have, are they working, do we need to make some changes, and what opportunities do we have for those kids that already know those guarantees. And our last thing that we're really starting to talk about is that growth mindset. What is our belief about student learning? Do we believe all students can learn? And so I need to do some reflection on our own belief systems and making sure we're not getting in the way of some of the great work that's going on and some of the potential that our kids have within themselves. So that's at the district level. Buildings will talk about their own as well. Any questions about that? All right, with that, I'm gonna hand off to the high school. Your packet is stapled a little bit backwards. So if you just go to the back page, to the order that we have our our slide. So the high school is sitting on the back page. And with that, Chris Moore? Yeah. Uh, I know you're not supposed to compare report card to report card, but that's one of the things we did. Uh, we wanted to see where did we make some gains and, and uh, where do we have some area to work yet. Uh, in the gains, we were happy to see that uh, we had uh, a 3.1 uh, point gain in closing our achievement gaps, uh, specifically in the, the areas of uh, math and the graduation rate. Um, those both uh, went up significantly. Uh, English language arts achievement gap dropped, and uh, uh, we're trying to figure out what, what happened there. Uh, and then on track for post-secondary readiness, we saw a uh, six percent or six point gain. Uh, so we were happy uh, with that as well. Um, one of the things we noticed as we took a look at the data, if we look at the Aspire score that our our current uh, 12th grade students should have uh, achieved as a composite predictor for the ACT should have been a 21.1. And so we're trying to identify what happened in, in relation to that ACT. Um, how did we set it up differently that uh, it maybe had some impact on that? Uh, one of the things that uh, came to light is I think in our efforts to try to decrease some of the stress that uh, the students had going into that, we said, don't worry about it, you can retake it. Well, that possibly sent a message of, don't, you don't have to worry, you know, don't do your best, don't prepare, just come in and see how it goes. And uh, so we're looking at uh, what other factors may have influenced that as well uh, for the decreased score. The other interesting thing that happened uh, with this report card is uh, our graduates from last year got scored twice. Uh, their 10th grade WKCE, their 11th grade ACT, and then our current seniors ACT score. So we have uh, two cohorts being compared, not three. Uh, so we're wondering uh, what kind of impact that may have had as well. Uh, so just some things that, uh, that have come out. But one thing we know is that we, uh, we can really work on the area of uh, reading and teaching our students active reading strategies, and that should have a significant impact on all areas of the ACT. So that's the area that we're going to work on this year. And uh, I, I always uh, ask my, uh, my teachers to set stretch goals, so I wanted to model that for them, uh, because we really can leave uh, no child behind. And when it comes down to it, how do you pick and choose what student is going to be successful? So let's really start stretching those goals. and. And uh, so we're going to work over the course of this year to really teach active reading strategies uh, and in hopes of taking the, uh, our current 10th grade students, their 9th grade scores are there, and getting them all to that 75th percent meeting or exceeding the benchmarks according to the 10th uh, grade Aspire. And then our current juniors going back and looking at their scores in 10th grade, that's why you see the two 10th grades and getting them to the same levels. Uh, and then English, we were already significantly are there, so stretch that out a little further uh, in trying to help those students do that. And in order to get to these, uh, these goals, uh, we're working uh, uh, within each department on finding uh, reading passages that they will use in the classroom and uh, making copies for each student so they can highlight, they can underline, they can write in the margins, they can understand those things that they can do when they're taking that ACT and, and when they're off in college and other stuff for their own learning uh, and how they better utilize those to uh, to understand that they're reading better. So that's where our SLO came from. Came from that because we did see the uh, ELA scores dip lower uh, in the, the growth, and, and we're concerned about that. Will the ACT be online this coming? Not yet. Not yet? No, still working that out. We hear it's right around the corner. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Aspire, was that? Not Aspire sometimes. Aspire's not in there. The high school is just uh, three years ago, the WKCE 
two years ago the ACT and last year's ACT. The SPIRE is part of the ACT suite of tests. They're supposed to provide students with information so they can make great decisions as they take their next courses, provide us with information to help them, and also give us information about our programming. Um, ninth, 10th, and then ACT work keys. But the state doesn't have a contract to work it into the, no agreement yet to work it into these scores, even though it would be beautiful because we have some nice. nice There's some amazing Aspire scores. And we have some nice growth points for kids because we can trace the ninth grade, then how did that person do in 10th grade, and how did that student do then on the ACT. But it's not factored into the state report card at this time. We look at them, however, as you can see. Anything else for high school? Middle school. All right. Um, so again, you know, don't compare, but we did. Um, <laughs> we saw some really great student achievement growth in English language arts from where we were two years ago. We went up by um, just about six full points on our achievement that way. Um, and in our math growth as well, we saw um, growth as far as getting our kids moving from one level um, to the next. And our focus on attendance and getting kids at school is paying off. Um, we went up by <coughs> a full point there, so that on track and getting getting kids there. We had our best attendance rate last year that we've ever had, over 96% of our kids of the daily attendance rate, which is pretty outstanding. Um, do still have some areas to focus on. Um, math achievement is not where we want it to be, and we did see a dip in ELA growth. Um, so being that we're a lot of singletons in the middle school, but some things that we can all focus on this year, um, we use our performance series exam, which is our district level exam that the kids take in the fall and in the spring, um, because we don't get the bat or the forward results back in time to set some really good goals that way. Um, this is something that we can use. Um, currently, right now, this fall on our baseline assessment with the kids, we had 14% um, of our kids were at a below average level on reading and math, and it was interesting. Both the below average and the above average were the exact same percentages. and um, we had 34% of our kids above average in reading and math. And so we want to, our goal is that we want to decrease the number of kids at below average to less than 10% while increasing our above average from, we're sitting at 34 right now, to at least 40%, if not more. Um, one of the biggest things that we looked at when we looked at our report card, and in the details section, you can see how all the achievement and the growth scores are calculated. Um, we did not have near the amount of kids that we anticipated in that advanced level, which you get 1.5 points for in the scoring. Um, and so that's a huge concern for us because we know we have kids that are, that are achieving on a regular basis and hitting that standard. Why are we not seeing it there? So putting some extra focus on getting, you know, not only our kids out of that bottom quartile and up, but in that middle range up to performing at that advanced level. Um, so that's where we set um, this piece this year in both theories of reading and math um, for us. questions for Sarah? All right, elementary. So you should have a copy of the elementary school report card in front of you. Um, like they've said, the comparison to previous years uh, with student achievement, uh, we saw a very nice increase in both uh, ELA and math, um, especially ELA, um, and very good comparison when compared to the state average as well, uh, four points over in both areas. Student growth is the area we um, identified as needing the most work in, particularly ELA. Um, we're full seven points below the state average in that. Uh, math, we were within a point. Um, so ELA, you'll hear about that in a couple minutes. That's where our SLO for our building is focused. Closing gaps, that's really where we uh, made our bread and butter. I mean, that's what made our score what it is. It's above state average. Um, overall, our exceeds expectations was because of our good work in closing gaps. Um, and we made heavy gains both in ELA and math from two years ago, as well as above the state average there. So that's a credit to um, a lot of our good work, and like they said, the, the groups there with the economically disadvantaged and the disabilities. Um, great work there, our RTI, our special ed team, our title team, a lot of really good work. Um, on track, our uh, attendance continues to be a strong point for us too, and then they use the third grade ELA as a, as a score down there, which was very good for us. So um, what are we doing to um, get better? Our elementary SLO, because we um, have a variety of grades that don't all use the same test at the elementary level. The forward is from third grade on up. I have three kind of parts of the SLO to include JK and then to include kindergarten. So um, the elementary school SLO focuses on student growth in ELA because that was our weakest spot in the area that we most uh, need improvement. 
of the number of junior kindergarten students and the PALS letter sound. That's what we identified as most connecting to um, literacy and that student growth in ELA from 75% who don't meet benchmark up to 20%. So essentially 80 who meet benchmark uh, in the spring. So that's a, a tall order and a big stretch goal, but one that I think we certainly can achieve. And the, the JK team is very much up to that. Kindergarten, likewise, we had very similar numbers um, in the PALS pointing assessment. And what that is, is as you read, kids who follow along with the words um, in a sentence can follow the word as you read them. And so that, again, 75% who weren't at benchmark, we want to decrease that to 20% who weren't at benchmark by spring. And again, a very um, tall task, but one that I believe we can do. Um, the number of first through fourth graders. So this one is using our Fondas and Pinnell benchmark assess, um, assessment. So if you've had kids at the elementary school, you get that reading level A to Z that's assigned how, where your kiddo is at. Um, it's using those. And we want to decrease um, these students who are below grade level by 5% and increase those who are above grade level by 5%. And we have approximately 55 to 80% who are at grade level, but who are above grade level. We want to bump that up and decrease those who are below, which is about 15 to 25%. So that's kind of our goal and how we want to uh, strengthen our, our student growth by getting those who are already above level higher and increasing that number, and those who are below get that bumped down and get those kids to a higher level. So. That is our plan at the elementary. Any questions? Did the benchmarks change there too? They do. Yep. So that's one thing that, um, that's why it's 5% because the benchmarks go up. So you know, when a kiddo enters first grade, they should be at a level C, but by the time they leave, they're at level J. So they, they keep moving up. And did the testing mechanisms stay, stay the same, or did they change as well? For like with, the, with these yeah, assessments? Cards. Did your state, did the elementary school level stay the same? Did they use Pinnell last year as well, or did those? Uh, oh, for on the state test? Correct. They don't use Finance and Pinnell. That's something that we're using because our first and second graders don't take the state test. Okay. And so we're using okay. that to connect to all of them. Yep. And that's a pretty universal uh, way of measuring where a student's at with literacy. Um, and that's what we did with our assessment day at the beginning of the school year this year, was to be able to find FMP is kind of our short term for that. So FMP kids before the school year started, and then again at the end to compare. Previously, we've not done that because it's such a time-intensive intensive assessment. It can take up to half hour, 40 minutes per kiddo. So to have that time at the beginning of the year was very helpful. So this do. is the first year that you This is the first year we'll have fall and spring to measure that growth. So that is, um, thanks to that assessment day we had, or assessment days, previously we would not have been able to do the school. So, so were your third graders in the same test all these years? Um, for the state test? No, that's changed. So like a lot Trish said, yep. So third through eighth are together. It used to be WKCE, yeah. then the, yeah, so forth. So, yep. But this year we will have the board exam two years in a row. We're hoping it sticks around for a little <laughs> bit so we can consistently yeah. compare. That'd be helpful. Yeah, because it's tough when you don't know what you're preparing for or what you're using. Yeah. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Something about the assessments. Yeah. Um, it would be really helpful to get that word message out to the parents of the elementary, like what you're using it for, because just the buzz is that nobody really understood what it was for, like we're doing assessments, but it was, so it would be, I mean, yep. to have to have that knowledge that you're, you can measure, you weren't able to do that before, but now you can measure from fall to spring, it would be awesome to know. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I do. Yep, we did a... Um, about a month after assessment day, we did a survey with the parents to kind of figure out what we could do better. And I think one thing is get that data out there a little sooner and how it's used. But yeah, um, I overall, think, there's support of doing it again next year, which is exciting. But yeah, I just think it would be a yep. nice thing for everybody to know. Because when you said that, I was like, oh, well, now it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's very, yeah. yeah. That's good feedback. Thank you. Yep. So let's get better. Yeah. It's nice to know why you gave that time. Here's what we did with it. <laughs> so if you, if not, comparing because they're all askew or would any, any of you have any big surprises where when you came back to the results was there anything that you just went I didn't see that coming or was everything right where you thought it would be no, we had a surprise uh, based on the, uh, the data and the predicted score of the composite of the ACT that, uh, that was shocking and I would say that the dip that we saw from the bad through to the forward was a shock. 
Mm -hmm. I did not expect us to, to drop. I mean, if you look at our ELA scores from the Badger, we're, I mean, I know at two of my grade levels, I had 76% of my kids proficient and advanced, and that was not the case this time around. So clearly the test was very different. Um, so that, you know, that was a shock to see that change because we did see quite a bit of success on the, on the Badger and it didn't, didn't did not translate to, to the board exam, so. So then my next question is, I mean, I, I, I do believe that this is all snapshots, yep. you know, and that do we have any way of looking at the data of our like past three year graduates just to see how many are still in college, how many are in technical school, how many have actually graduated? I mean, I think that might be interesting. You know, Wise Dash does have a, a, um, a component that kind of lets you know where your students ended up. You know, if you remember, those of you that were around a little while ago, um, it used to be outside of Wise Dash, now it's inside of Wise Dash, and it does let you know if they go to a two year, a four year, in state, out of state, that kind of that data. It does, and how many are retained, so how many come back for a second year. Um, but longevity over the long time, longer times is not available. Is that student tracker data? It, it used Dash? to be student tracker and then DPI took it on and now it's right in Wise Dash, private. Um, public's a little less. Yeah, I can, yeah. At the high school, Dawn asked me one day, she was like taking a, I called about Hannah for something. She asked me about Andrew. And she was like, where's he going? What's he, what's he studying? Mm -hmm. Maybe just ask Dawn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she might have a list somewhere. Sure. You know, there's, there's definitely some pockets of some bright spots, but we got a lot of work to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we look at the conference and we look at the schools and our overall about And you can see how complex this is. And you know, and it doesn't surprise me again looking from the outside coming in, there's we're just we're misfiring on, on, on some things we're not it's not all coming together yet. I, I, you know, I keep saying this, you know, the strategic plan helps with that because now you identify the weaknesses in your your areas you want to work on and that becomes your commitment for your strategic plan. So it's very important to get this uh, get this thing done. Because if you just take a look at the district scores right now and you were looking at a school district to move in, you know, you know, everyone is exceeds or significantly exceeds and we meet. We're the lowest one. So again, it's not going to take much. It's just going to take all the cylinders firing together. So. I think it's a complex, multifaceted it is. thing. I think that's where the community is is real important to get them involved. So you know, again, fifty thousand foot view. You know, hopefully. Mm -hmm answered a few questions, but I think as you look at this now, you know, start formulating your questions and we'll definitely come back to this because this is, this is what we're here for. Yeah. This, is, this is it. And occasional football and basketball game. I think exactly. Not so, a choir concert. Yeah. <laughs> so you took us through A, B, and C, and then Nancy, you wanted to cover so You had some questions on D that we added item D new options. What would you like? What information would you like to add? Did you have any more that you wanted to share with us? That's it for tonight. Thank you very Thank you. much for You're that. You're welcome. It's better to know what we need to work on than to go at it blindly. So I am appreciative of all the work that did go into comparing. And sorry that you had dealt with the three years in a row of change on what's to be the measure. And I can't promise that you won't have to do it so far. But we keep working with it. So I'm hopefully we gain something every year. Mm -hmm. sure. We'll have our work session. Can the admin team be part of that? So I'll just commit them to another night. <laughs> I mean, just so we can have them. Well, we I need we need them. Yeah. yeah for we these, these discussions. Yeah. So. Okay. Sorry, Nancy. Yeah. No, that's right. Um, I was just curious um, how many applications we had this year compared to previous years. How much does our district invest in this? You know, I couldn't tell you the dollar amount. That would definitely be a question. But I don't think 
I think they're about the same number. Oh, it's, it's about average. <laughs> um, have we ever looked at how many students are able to do take advantage of these credits transferring into a new program? Following up with it? Yeah. No. no I don't know. Uh, and that's really, uh, as you know, school by school, case by case. And, Do we have any idea how much we spend on that? I, I don't, unless... I don't know. I, I, I don't get any of those bills. So. That, that's definitely a day of use. I mean, I'm sure can find out. I know that uh, with all of the AP courses and college and schools courses and articulated courses, uh, we are seeing fewer students, but this is about average for the last couple of years at least on the number of students, but we're keeping more of them in house, which is a good thing. So these are all students that are going to another location? Yeah, they're either going to WITC or River Falls. And there are students hoping to, so they aren't necessarily Right, they have to be accepted into their hoping to. Yeah. If you don't have a driver's license, that you can't participate in it? You can. Uh, yeah. We have quite a, a few students who do it that uh, if their friend gets in, then they carpool with them. this topic to a, a work session at some point. I'd just like to have a better understanding of how it impacts our budget. And you know, we can put that, uh, I get that budget information, because we'll put it on, if, if, if you want to take action on it, we'll just have a special meeting at the work session, and that way we'll meet the deadline for this, so no problem. And I'll have those, see if we get some historical data on it. Will that impact what we would decide on this I would assume that you know Dave takes yeah. an average and budgets for this because mm -hmm. it's something that's going to happen every year. Yeah, and we don't it. have we don't really have the ability to say no, they can't do this. Right. <laughs> so that's why I'm wondering. You know, it's one of those it things is. that yeah. you know it's going to happen. It's, it's so just that we can sure whether you approve it tonight, we can still get the information for you so sure. you have it. Uh, other then we just don't have to have a special meeting. Mm -hmm. one so of the I, my suggestion would be we we go ahead with the approval because we we are required to but that we can get and learn more about how it works because then our goal should be to make it more enticing for the students to want to stay here. Yeah, and that's one of the things that if we offer the course in-house, they can't sign up for that at the college level. It's gotta be a course that we do not offer for them. So these students that you see might have signed up for five or six there, if they can't get in the first one, they wanted to be sure to have some right. options to go to. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'd rather have our kids staying here taking advanced courses. You know, colleges are, they've been, that whole post-secondary piece has just been a kid grab. You know, as their numbers go down, where's our next population? Let's get the juniors and seniors. And, uh, you know, the more college and the schools we can have kids stay in this environment. You know, when you get 16, 17-year-olds messing around with 20, 21-year-olds, it's just not a good environment. So. Thank you. So, are you looking for a motion then on this? We need approval. So, I would make a motion to approve the youth options application that's presented this evening. Would anyone be comfortable with second? I'll second. Thank you, Patty. Um, any other questions on that? And uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So the, I'll get that you got that. It. And then we can also continue to have the discussion mm -hmm. on you know, finding out number one the cost to the district and hopefully feeling more. Thank you. All right, thanks, Nancy, for the question. Mm -hmm. On to item five. Cultivating professional growth and learning. Is there anyone else talking in that? Yeah. No, I don't think we have anything in here. There was a comment, I heard somebody say something about CESA. I have some questions on that. Um, I know with the, the new website looks phenomenal. One of the things that was brought up in the most recent CESA meeting was that the um, Organization of Civil Rights, Office of Civil Rights, excuse me, is actually catching some districts on it because it has to be accessible. So now, what it sounded like in the people that were there is districts are reconsidering how much they're going to put on there because it is more time consuming and costly to make it so that a blind yep. person can actually hear what is on there so that, you know, and address all those needs. So I'm wondering where we're at with that. that. was just a topic at our last PAC meeting too and everyone's kind of like, well, 
what do we, yes, you know, okay, relatively well, so now we're waiting for them to come back with, <coughs> say, here's something you should be doing, because uh, there were a few districts that got Nailed. hit on this, so, yes. so they're going to make the examples of them, and we're still trying to figure out, okay, what does it mean? It'll definitely impact oh, it, it, it how will. we proceed with that, and I just wanted everyone to be aware of that, that it's out there. Trisha, is please. I can, I can address that just a little bit. Sure. We, um, Matt Rivard also attended another IT. He, we sent him off to the IT networking group. We watched a webinar on it. CMS, our platform, is taking a hit on the other side of the state. So they're being tested right now, and so they're coming up with a plan for all districts using their platform. And they've already set out to us kind of a 10-step process just to move forward move toward being having that accessibility that we need to have so it's pretty I want I'm actually say it's pretty simplistic right now one two three four do this add all text do this do that so the fact that we just launched our new skin site uh, last week so we're coming back together as a website team just to run through that one two three four okay are we good here and do we have a plan uh, moving forward so we are addressing it in-house as well, and we're learning more as CMS is being challenged. Uh, just a heads up, I knew that was it. And the other thing, you know, I think you asked the question if we had any results, and you had mentioned why Dash, you did, that why Dash does now have that, how many have graduated. I was surprised that, let's see, they gave some numbers last time, 58.2% of Wisconsin high school graduates enter college in the fall after graduation, and of that, much lower percentage actually graduate, so the numbers are not so high as some might think. But I think too we're going through a change into there's a lot more um, encouragement for the technical side, which I'm glad we're doing at that lab. That we're getting more broad in our options that we're offering students to consider for careers too. Yeah, and uh, University of Minnesota did a whole uh, study on this too, and you can't assume that the drop is solely because of. Uh, lack of preparedness academically. No, it's cost. Uh, it, it, it's cost, it's uh, other, a whole wide variety of things that can go into that. Uh, the best comparison is that freshman year, how well did we do them for that year? And are they ready for, for college? So we keep moving forward. All right, anything else on that? Um, then we'll move on to item six, engaging the community through partnerships. Um, Anything in? Did anyone? All I had was just you know, I, yes. the school district of New Richmond. On Thursday, December 1st, is partnering with um, law enforcement uh, for protecting your child's digital footprint. Are you already aware of this? Um, it's from 630 to 745 at the New Richmond Middle School Auditorium, Thursday, December 1st. So they're having the presenters with the Jacob Wetterling Resource Center. And um, I just think it might be kind of nice, especially I'm thinking middle school kids in that area for their parents to know that this when is available. When you email me the link for the other thing we were talking about? What's when you, that? When you email me the link from the meeting, would you email me that information? I, I will. I'll find it too and I can blast it out through the campus too. So. And then our, I'm sorry, the Jacob Wetterling Foundation. Do you know who they spoke? Did they speak to you to someone here? Well, that? no. <laughs> Free child care for how to train children. Be present for a chance to win it. They did it with Brandy. They did it with a grant, and every parent got this book. And Brandy Hart. Yeah, she's one that got the grant for it. But yeah, they they've got a whole community engagement project that they do, and uh, they come right out to your school and. They do really great work. So we come here and do our own. Well, I know it's 10 minutes away. Um, no, they got they wrote a grant through their community foundation. So we can. Is that something we could? So well, you could do that, or well, there doesn't hurt to advertise yeah. theirs. Correct. Yeah, but we could always do another topic too. Yeah, this one here is uh, all about safe zones. And, uh, so. 
it's their, their Jacob Waterman Foundation is really working hard to do outreach. And then the only other thing is on um, December 5th, the Sheriff's Office, they took over our Stop Drugs Poster Contest from the DA's office, because their DA is retiring. Mm -hmm. And um, so Scott Knudsen, Somerset boy, took over. He's the chief's deputy. I should call him like he's a child. Um, <laughs> he, uh, so he's he's been running it this year, and they're doing some new things. It's out at, uh, I can't remember, is it Baldwin Woodville? I will get more <laughs> this year. Um, but it's, it's Monday, December 5th. If you'd like, I can get it. I, I'm not sure if we have any Somerset kids who um, won uh, this year and their work is going to be published because I was judging and you don't get to know them. <laughs> so um, I'll send that out and maybe do a mention of it or something. I can't remember the time because it's not my department anymore. But that's coming up too. But I really like this. Uh, I, I know I have parents always asking, well, does your child, do you allow your child to use Snapchat, are there parental controls? So I think this thing is. Um, yeah. All right, so you want to talk with you and you talk with me? <laughs> <laughs> your people get a little people and I don't have people. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> so um, sounds like this is a very good thing to perform because. Um, part of that's going to be marketing too, so maybe we can pick up with that and that kind of stuff. Anything more on that engaging community through partnerships? That's a great partnership that we have access to. Yeah. Great way to start. Um, I know Kate brought home a bag. I'm not sure what it came home from. Was it from the high school with things they're needing at the food shelves? Oh, yeah, that might have been through uh, um, Honor Society. Okay. They're, they're working and partnering with them. Okay. Um, they were very specific about the things that they could use at the food show. So it's not the whole high school that's doing that. I don't believe it went through the whole high school yet. Okay. Um, I think that that's it then, unless there's something I've missed. Anyone that I might have missed something in the community that we should be aware of or could draw attention to? Should. Good. All right, on to. Um, item number seven, advance service and operation. Nothing, here? Nothing, nothing tonight from Dave, all right. And then we'll move on to item eight, consent agenda. So um, would anyone be comfortable making one of the motions that we are looking for? I mean, uh, under A. Do the entire, the the entire the agenda. agenda. In two. All the ones. <coughs> Thank you. Katie, and uh, not Katie. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. And a second. Is that here? Is anyone comfortable? I'll second it. Thank you, Patty. Any questions for anything? I know there were just a couple of typos in there, Rochelle. Just a couple of typos. I don't know if you want to know about no, that. The know. message is still there. It, so Sometimes we cut and paste in the new stuff, so I appreciate it. Okay, there was a form for from, from, from oh. one of the two. Um, and there was one other one, I don't remember now. So aside from that, if there's no other discussion on those, then uh, all those in favor of the approval of the consent agenda? Motion made by Patty, or K Katie and seconded by Patty. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, thank you. That includes the board bills as well. So then we are on to item number nine. General information, any upcoming dates of importance? I know we have a band concert come, or a concert, music concert coming up. Do you know what that is? You guys are at the high school. I think it's next week, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday. We are not good. We should be on the ball. <laughs> the middle school yeah, one. The middle of the calendar, like yeah. 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 The middle school one is December 15th. Okay. Middle school concert for December 15th. Yeah, fifth and sixth grade are the first. Oh boy. Um, six o'clock, six fifteen, six thirty, and then seventh, eighth grade is seven thirty or seven forty-five. So they do 
Two separate ones. You said December 15th. December 15th, I know that for sure. I do think next week. Probably on our website already. I think it's on the website. I think it is our activities. Activities. Yes, right over there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I know the girls are playing tonight and tomorrow night. Basketball. So does anybody else know any of the others? Oh, look at that. She's on the ball. What's up this week? Oh. Yeah, it's just basketball yeah. boys and girls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just showing you. Like, you These are the schedule. Oh, right this here. is the <laughs> Oh, okay. this is nice. Yeah. Uh, I'll bring we need this ones. for. Uh, uh, kindergarten has their music program on Wednesday, December 21st. Uh, we strategically plan it the day before the last day. Because uh, every once in a while it's happened to where uh, last day is a snow day. So. And that's during the day, right? That is at 145. And is it uh, cold because of size? What's that? Is, is that cold that's open? Oh. You may have to park at the middle school to get there. <laughs> yes, do. Yep. All right. <laughs> Anything else that's coming up that you guys are aware of that you're looking forward to? On the musical, remember December 9th? Oh, that's right. That's right. December 9th, 10, 11. Uh, band and choir concert. I do not see it. Uh, and I know. Yeah, it's the 12th. Next week? No. So it's two weeks. I have it on my phone. Okay, um, then uh, anything else we should cover on there? Anything else on my list? All right, then on to, so that's kind of our once around the table, or is that just a No, that's a work session. Okay, so motion to adjourn, yeah, unless you guys want to stay here. So moved. Thank you, Kate. I'll second. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Well, that was good. That was good. You know what, we might have the last 10 minutes. Thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you.